All right, cool. So uh, this is uh, defeating next-gen AV and EDR using old tricks on new dogs. These are Twinkies. I'm Graphics. So the obligatory uh, bio. Um, my name's Nick Lehman, um, at Graphics on uh, Twitter. Um, Ten plus years in InfoSec, uh, mostly doing red teaming. Uh, I do uh, CCDC red team uh, for the uh, Wisconsin CCDC as well as uh, Midwest Regionals. Yep, they won last night. Yep, hey, a win's a win. Um, also, a uh, local city sec uh, organizer or disorganizer, as uh, the case may be. Uh, and I'm also a Girl Scout leader. Uh, my daughter, who's in the front row here, will uh, be around after the talk to uh, take some cookie orders. I expect cookie orders from everybody. Uh, I'm Steve Eisen. I go by the handle Rum Twinkies. Uh, long story behind that. Ask me later. <laughs> um, our red teamer under. Red Teamer in disguise on the blue team. Um, all things malware, um, collecting, creating, and reversing. Um, turn ons, fileless malware, WMI persistence, and I have four daughters and a shotgun. So, a couple disclaimers. First off, we are not here in any official capacity of our company or company. Our company neither condones nor condemns the information we are about to present. The views and opinions expressed in this presentation are not necessarily the views and opinions of, the, of our company. This talk cannot be combined with any other offer or promotion. No cash value, void where prohibited by law. Offer expires 1-1-1970. Uh, TLDR, our companies <laughs> wish they had our swagger. Disclaimer number two. This talk is not focused on obtaining privilege escalation. It is assumed that there are any number of paths to elevate to the required access through gaps in security controls, unpatched OS vulnerabilities, or overly permissive user accounts. Basically, we're here to talk about killing AV and EDR. We'll just assume for this talk that everyone is rocking local admin by default, you know, like in the real world. TLDR, we're going to focus on disabling ED AV and EDR, not privesc. So the agenda for today. Background. Evasion is hard. The trouble with cloud-dependent AI and in yeah, I can't talk. In an EDR. Uh, hitting the easy button. Silly things vendors do. Uh, conclusions and questions slash drinks. Well, we'll be drinking the entire time. You can get drinks later. So a little bit of background. Yeah, I'm not reading that. If you want to, I'll, I'll sit here for a minute. All right, fuck that noise. All right, so EDR software 101. Uh, endpoint detection and response. Uh, monitors processes, network traffic, memory, sometimes. Uh, feeds giant database for analytics and baseline AI things and ML stuff. Um, continuous monitoring, monitoring of endpoints for anomalies. All right. Endpoint detection and report is what we've seen. That There's really no response. So it's, it's the Paul Blart of AD. Um, Bigger baseline, better alerting, mostly. EDR is not AV. Next gen AV, 101. Uh, okay, you guys already see the punchline. Old AV makes decisions based on file signatures in a really, really big and process intensive database. Next gen AV looks at process behavior. Old AV. Long resource intensive file scans. Next gen AV, behavioral analysis, exploit detection, apl application whitelisting, and more. Old AV is a pain in the ass to uninstall. See John McAfee's tutorial. Uh, Next gen AV, as it turns out, is a lot easier to kill than John McAfee. So before we get started, and now that we have an understanding of what next gen AV and EDR is, um, I, I, I want to give a shout out to a couple of people that have that have actually sp springboarded this research. Um, most importantly is Chris Thompson from X Force Red. Um, he gave a talk at Black Hat uh, Europe in 2017. Um, uh, so URLs are there. Um, we'll have the slides after the, after the uh, presentation if you need them to. Um, also, uh, ba basically, we, we we took his we cribbed from his work and then kind of expanded on it. Um, also, MDSEC um, has had a couple of blog posts on uh, kicking, kicking silence in the teeth. 
Um, and a special thank you to Evil Doby um, for, uh, and he's over there. Say hi. Uh, yeah. Um, for uh, being a CrowdStrike test subject. Also, shout out to uh, Spectre Ops for um, the work that they've done on uh, Ackles, Dackles, Aces. So, throughout all the research that we were doing, when, when we were looking to kind of dive into this realm, um, we, we saw so many people doing evasion. But evasion is hard. Um, un unusual behavior is flagged. Um, risky Windows API calls are almost always monitored. Um, PowerShell is watched like a hawk, especially with not, now that it's got AMSI in it. Um, it it's, it's becoming more and more useless, at least from an attacker standpoint. Um, that, not to say that it is completely useless. I know that there are those edge cases where you can still get around things. Um, say, same thing with LSASC. Um, memory contact, if you, if you even try to touch it, um, it it'll alert. Um, hours and hours of coding and testing can be burned in seconds, um, which is really frustrating. And that and that that's that's basically where we where we started to veer off into rather than evading. Um, and, and as you'll see in a minute, um, we we just found a better solution is to just turn it off. So here's our recipe for success. No, little John. Um, you need a half cup of cutoff comms. So if the EDR can't see see threats, and it has no way and has no way to report it, did it happen? Um, 25 grams of mimic user land activities. Um, if it looks like a user and smells like a user, it must be a user. Uh, 1.75 liters of kill the processes and services. Um, two dashes of fight dirty and 3.3 repeating ounces of force them to get better. Uh, we, we've, we've talked to a couple of vendors on this and um, really only only Microsoft was um, good good on receptive, uh, good, good on fixing some of the issues that we, that we found. Um, we, we, we did have uh, some push and pull and, and, and we, we did have a couple of bug reports that, that did eventually get fixed, but it, it took a lot longer than we originally expected. All right, the uh, trouble with cloud-dependent uh, EDR. Um, cloud-dependent uh, cloud EDR requires a network. Um, you can't call home, you can't report. So basically, um, you can take methods as, uh, with firewall, you can basically block everything that goes out to Microsoft if you're dealing with ATP or other, if you happen to know where its CC is. Um, or just turn off the network device while you're doing your dirty deeds. Uh, none of it's going to get reported until it's all over. Um, and Or have you just tried uninstalling it? Um, for Microsoft, uh, basically, if you block anything all Microsoft, uh, port, usually over port 443, uh, turn off the interface, um, um, you're, you're pretty much golden. Um, you're not going to get uh, that reporting. Um, Whatever you're going to do is then going to run silently, and you're good. Cut off the brain and the body dies. So with all that communication gone, nothing for it to report, nothing for it to do. Um, this is also true of your AVs as well. Um, some of them require, especially AI, some of them require some sort of cloud analytics. And when they don't have that analytics to depend on, um, they they become rather dumb. They, they basically fall back to old style uh, hash value type uh, AVs. So without that communications, um, they're not quite as smart. Some of them, silence in particular, uh, can run in an offline mode and uh, be rather impressive at times, but there are ways around that as well. So uh, who here knows a lot about WMI? Liars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be honest, uh, WMI is a giant black box for most people. Um, that is where the sweetness is. That's where a lot of malware is hanging out. That's where a lot of stuff is happening. Um, WMI is a lot of the queries are not watched. A lot of the recon is not watched in WMI. You can get away with a lot of stuff there. You can get a lot of information off a machine with WMI. 
um, probably not going to get seen. Um, and you can manipulate a lot of stuff with WMI. And you can hit an entire organization over WMI all at once. So consider that. Consider that. Um, Unmanaged code. So when we're dealing with uh, AIs, um, we've basically come to the conclusion um, if you're using managed code such as .NET or C Sharp or other uh, interpreted languages, um, the AI usually has a pretty good idea of what's going to happen before it executes. However, if you're writing something in C and you don't call any libraries, you don't do any includes, and you roll it all your own, um, there's a pretty good chance it's not going to know what's going to happen, and it's going to run whatever you're going to run. Uh, not knowing anything. It's just going to, it really doesn't get to that depth of the code level. It's going to look at the strings. It's going to look at the APIs. It's going to look at your libraries. But uh, if you're not doing any of that, um, it's going to be rather blind. Yeah, real quick. Um, one, one thing that I wanted to point out on this slide is, um, Silent Trinity by Bipe Leader um, is testing the boundaries of um, what can be caught using .NET Framework. Um, we highly recommend checking it out if you haven't yet. Um, there's there's a lot of things that you can do with Iron Python that you can't do with C Sharp, um, and that and that specifically um, leads into the next slide with um, alternative register end keys or adding null terminators to, to the reg keys so you hide them. Um, one of the things that I found in my testing was that using Iron Python, you can actually put in a reg null key, and it's not going to throw that error when you go back to it in um, reg edit, which I thought was actually kind of interesting. Uh, so much so that I had to actually double check it a couple times to make sure that it actually was added to the registry. Um, but we, we know that run keys have been burned. Um, Although null byte reg registry values are sometimes uh, still overlooked, uh, but you can you can still detect them in regedit when you throw that error saying, "Oh well, we couldn't read this reg value." Uh, and and sometimes you might be able to just hijack and overwrite the existing uh, startup binary, and you don't even need to mess with the registry. Okay, so fighting dirty, so killing the running process, uh, stop or delete the service, overwrite the folder, binary, driver with garbage. Um, so if you have a protected process light or you have some other stuff that are stopping you from touching the, the folders and the files, um, you, you could just rip the headers right off the file using a low-level uh, low editor or hex editor, make the file unloadable, reboot that machine or kill the service. It's not going to start up again. Uh, your AV is now gone. Uh, do as you please. Um, and then, of course, we have Ackles, Dackles, and iCackles. Um, has anybody considered just take ownership of it and change the Ackles on it? Um, you'd be surprised what you can do. So, oh, yeah, sorry. You need to speak up. So um, ba basically, in the last slide, oh, hold on a second. There we go. Um, so now we're, we're not advocating destruction of data. But what we say, fight dirty. If you have to force a system admin to go back in and reinstall one of these uh, EDRs or next gen AVs, that's going to piss them no, off to no end, and that's going to force them to go to the vendor and say, hey, why don't you fix this? Um, so, force, this, this is also going to force them to get better, it's going to hold them accountable. Honestly, this is something that traditional AV has been doing for years. Um, I've, tr I've tried with Sophos, and the only way I was able to actually disable or uninstall it was to reboot into safe mode so that the kernel mode driver won't boot, wouldn't load. And that was the only way I was able to mess with it and, and remove it. Um, this is something that can, be, that, that can be fixed, and while Next Gen AV is very good at what it does, it's not very good at protecting itself yet. We can make it better. So we also know no more PowerShell. Everybody's going to C Sharp. Everybody's going to C++. Um, native, but native commands are really all you need. Um, you can do 
so much more with a small batch script and not get detected than you can with a few hundred lines of C sharp. So we found that for all that cool high tech machine learning, AI, blockchain, buzzy, buzzy, wordy, wordy features, not a bug value added protection mechanism, whatever. Um, they had some very low level and very highly exploitable uh, chinks in the armor. Now when I say this, I mean that this is true of every EDR in Next Navy that we were able to test, um, including ATP until recently. Um, we haven't finished researching one particular uh, vendor, which is Carbon Black, um, but we're hoping to do that and maybe maybe we'll do a blog post about it. Um, so how is this all possible, you ask? Um, oh, I'm sorry. And, and CrowdStrike at least knows this because they've been told about it by their customers. Um, a, a, fr a friend of mine actually sent me this screenshot from their customer service, for, uh, from their customer forums, um, talking about how all you need to do is just go in and delete the files, files and you're golden. Uh, now, first off, good on CrowdStrike for getting a protected process light process. Now, who here knows what a PPL process is? Okay, only a couple. Um, PPL is, um, basically it's a protected process in the kernel. It loads through an early anti-malware driver um, and, and, and gets loaded uh, with extra protections from the kernel. Basically, even as system, you can't stop the process, you can't turn it off, you can't delete the service. Um, and uh, so, but but for this particular instance, th they know that they have the gaps in the file system. And this was as of June, I'm sorry, July of this year, that, that they at least knew about it. Um, so, but however, in some, some instances, uh, even local admin or system isn't allowed to mess with the file system um, or, or even the registry in this case. Um, so what, what are we to do? Um, luckily, Microsoft was nice enough to include a special privilege to help us out with that. Um, and this privilege is enabled by default for all local administrators. It's the take ownership um, privilege. Um, so take ownership of files or other objects. This security setting determines which users can take ownership of a sec any securable object in the system, including Active Directory objects, files and folders, printers, registry keys, processes, and threads. What they leave out here is service objects. Um, caution, assigning this user right can be a security risk, since owners of objects have full control of them. Only assign this user right to trusted users. Default is admins. So think about that for a second. Any object, any securable object, you can take ownership of if you're a local admin, including Active Directory, including registry, including service, including processes. And once you have ownership of it, you have full control over it. Whoa, that was loud. <laughs> so, and any anything with an ACL has an owner. All right, let's uh, look and see what that looks like. So this is what we call uh, so easy even HR can do it. Um, we <laughs> uh, when we were doing this, uh, we were talking about the evasion part earlier. Um, we found that uh, basically there's there's a much easier way to do this. Instead of trying to evade, let's just go after the AV. Let's make it go away. And here's what we did. So we uh, took this take on process and we looked at uh, iCackles one liners and putting them into some bad files and we just uh, played around to see what, what, what we could do. Uh, so right here we have some commands right here. So in this case, uh, this is Windows uh, Defender Advanced Threat Protection. Um, that first line up there is to take ownership of the directory. Um, uh, prior to this, uh, recently, um, you could take ownership of that entire directory and then of course uh, set the iCackle to uh, grant everyone. Um, and then of course you could rename it and delete it and do whatever you want with it. However, um, 
that was kind of a long process. You'd have to reboot first before you could rename it because it was a protected process light, so you still can't shut it down, but you have control of the, the exes now. You can uh, rename them so they're not going to start back up, or you could just delete them. Um, there's all kinds of things that you could do. Um, but what if uh, this other line down here, what if we just set system deny? You know, now we don't have to rename it. Now we don't have to do anything with it. Now just when it comes back up after the first reboot, nothing's going to happen. It can't touch it. System can't touch it. So we're use the the cackle against it. Um, so most recently, uh, Microsoft uh, apparently has heard this discussion or has heard us because we've spoken to them and let them know about this. Um, they did, in fact, um, harden these directories. So you can no longer take ownership, not even as system. So if you're looking here at the screen, you see the who am I, I'm NT authority system. Um, when I try and do the take ownership, it just says access denied. So even as local admin, even as system, nothing. Um, cool, right? You know, um, they're, they're learning, you know. And then of course, uh, silly things vendors do. So, Windows Defender has hardened their directories, but all you need to do is flip a bit on a registry key as local admin. It is protected up to local admin, um, and Windows Defender is disabled. All you need is that registry file, and you're done. Got your pictures? All right, so... In addition to the vulnerable areas that we've just discussed, there are also some hot, um, silly things that vendors do, which also helped us accomplish the goal of just turning off the protection mechanisms. Um, Silence did a couple of these. Now, Rum Twinkies and I, uh, we wrote a blog on this um, on, on this fail um, in particular, um, complete with a POC script. Yes, it's PowerShell, and we said not to use PowerShell, but we're confident in your ability to mimic these actions in other automated ways. Um, specifically, um, we, we were taking a look at the Silence SVC um, executable service, uh, or service binary, and I, I was trying to figure out what, how does it work? I mean, what, what can we do? Is there like a, is there a help menu or something? So I, I was just throwing some, you know, um, Silence SVC .exe stop. You know, um, it, it didn't like it, but it was, it, it helped me out with a nice little help message. Um, and I, I'm not sure if you guys can actually read the, read the screen, but um, it, it, it gave me a couple of flags that I could use. One of them was dash I. The other one was a little bit more interesting. That was dash U. Um, and it says, removes the Windows service if installed. Now, my version of Silence had an uninstall token, which, of course, the desktop team wouldn't give me the uninstall token for. Um, so I, I was like, well... Maybe it's going to ask me if they uninstall token, or maybe it's going to require it as, an, as a command line option. Um, nope. Uninst uninstallation succeeded. So the service was still running, so it would still require a reboot, but it was now disabled, and upon reboot, you could just go to town and, and do whatever. You could, you could plant your malware, or plant your payload, wait for it to, wait for it to reboot, you know, because... Windows never shits the bed, and you need to reboot it like once a week. Um, so we, we we actually reported this to Silence, um, and and they, they they said, oh well, that that's you know that's that's great. We'll we'll take it under advisement. We'll look at it as a as a feature enhancement. Um, and, and and they did they did fix it. So um, fixed an issue where the Silence service could be uninstalled on Windows. Um, so as of Silence version fifteen twenty. Um, you can no longer do that. However, they added some more flags. So you can now register, unregister, enable, and disable Silence within the uh, Windows Security Center. So I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. Now, full disclosure, you do need to be actually at system level. Um, so you need to be NT authority system in order to actually get access to this particular um, help menu and these flags. So I started playing with it. It's like, okay, I'll disable, I'll unregister, I'll disable, I'll register. Um, um, and lo and behold, they, you know, I, I, I see this pop up. 
virus and threat protection, check virus protection. Windows Defender, Antivirus, and Silence Protect are both turned off. Please click to see installed antivirus apps. Um, we, we didn't actually have that. Um, but uh, in addition to these, these kind of oversights that help me as the attacker, um, th there were a couple of other gaps, and, and I want to actually go through those real quick. Um, and and I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to... Okay, we got time. Uh, I'm going to tempt the, uh, the, the demo gods with uh, a couple of live demos here. Um, so... Bear with me for just a moment. Just a moment. Can you see? Yeah. Oh, that, that didn't work. Okay, hold on a second. Hold this. Quick, hold my beer. Uh, can we uh, duplicate the screen? And this would be tempting the demo gods. Oh, there we go. There we go. I can see it. All right, so this is the latest version that I was able to get a hold of, which is Silence uh, 1530. So a couple of things um, with regards to the protection of registry objects, file system objects, and, and service objects. Um, one of the things that we have here is the, okay, so this is the service. So um, HKLM, System con Current Control Set, Services, Silence SVC. This is the registry key that tells Windows that this is a service, this is what you run, this is how you run it, this is, you know, e everything that you put into the, the services um, UI gets populated in here. Um, and additionally, there, there's some security that you have here, which... Um, this is where your uh, security SDDL gets put in um, in, in binary. Um, and honestly, I'm not really concerned with this. But if we delete if we delete this registry key, we no longer have a service. But lo and behold, it says cannot delete Silence SVC service error while deleting key. So what do we do? Let's take a look at the permissions. Okay, so administrator. Oh well, he he can only read. Let's go ahead and change the ownership. And we'll do that. And well, that took. Close this out. And this is why I hate doing live demos. So let's go ahead and double check our permissions. Make sure that the. Yep. Hold on a second, we're going to. Okay, so. Ah, I know why. So we do have full permission here, full control. All right, so there we go. That uh, that took out the registry key, and when we reboot. So I can hold this. 
So as you're uh, looking at all this and what we're doing, imagine being able to do this via WMI to an entire network all at once. Just to let that sink in for a moment as to how fast you could bring down an entire um, an entire network of protection. Microsoft is updating. <laughs> Don't close it. So how many are having a good time at DerbyCon? Yeah? Uh, make it a good one, last one, so let's all have a good time. And also make sure to give Dave a big hug. Just from my perspective, uh, this has been a tremendous privilege to uh, be able to uh, attend Derby Cons. Um, I've learned a lot uh, from other people speaking. So if you guys got good stuff to share, uh, consider speaking yourself and putting yourself out there. Um, there's a lot of us that have information that can help the rest of us. It's just not the next Derby Con, of course. But there are other conferences out there, so you know, share what you know. Spotted cow new glarus. Warm. Yeah, but we're from Wisconsin, so it's like water. Yeah, we'll drink anything in a can. All right, so we rebooted. And we're still loading up here. Da -da 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 -da. We need some theme music or something, man. All right, so it says connecting to service. So the Silence Protect tray still opens, and it's still there, but it's, the, the service is now gone. It's, it's been deleted. So it'll look like it's still there, and it, it'll, it'll, it'll show up that little little icon, but you try to run something, it, it'll let it through. The, the service is, is, is gone. That, that's the brains and, and the, the action behind Silence. So I'm going to do another one more Silence demo. So, I'm gonna revert to snapshot three. Where the hell are you, man? <laughs> this is what I get for leaving Discord up. All right, so. All right, hold this again. Now I'm going to uh, show you a magic trick of uninstalling Silence that requires an uninstall token without the uninstall token. Because again, desktop support did not give me the uninstall token. Quick, everyone out there with this Slack uh, handle, uh, send them something right now for some entertainment. <laughs> Thank you. That made my day. God, I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, how do we kill Slack? Just to show you there's nothing on my sleeve.
I love you, Matt. Welcome to Costco. I love you. All right, so we have the uninstall token. It, it's not letting me uninstall it. Oh no, no token. What are you gonna do? All right, so you see all this gibberish here? Silence zero, silence one, silence two. This is actually your uninstall token. Aren't you guys glad you stayed now? Yep. All right, so current owner system, we're still local admin, so we can always change it to administrators. If I can type. Fucking with my mojo, man. All right, so we're now uh, we now have full control. All we need to do is null out these particular. Oh, what the? Oh, I I didn't recurse it. Sorry. And now we go back. Oh. And there we go. That's two Ds. So, now, you, you may think that I'm picking on Silence, but Silence isn't the only vendor that has these gaps. CrowdStrike as well. Um, all right, Upgrade. Let me see your laptop. All right, so we're going to do another live demo with CrowdStrike. Um, and in this one, now, keep in mind, CrowdStrike does have a PPL process, so you need to reboot in order to actually clear it out because even a system, you're not able to stop the process. Thanks, honey. This thing have an HDMI, right? Giggity. All right, let me just make this clear. This is not my laptop.
So hopefully by giving some of these uh, discussions and raising these awarenesses, we're hoping that these vendors are going to start uh, doing a little more protection of their file systems and not just protecting their processes. Um, I mean, the AV is busy watching you, every other process to make sure nothing bad is happening. Unfortunately, it's not very busy watching itself or protecting itself. So uh, we want to see just a little bit more of that uh, self-protection. Um, when you think about AI and what's coming down the road, uh, it's going to be harder and harder and harder to slip by with evasion. Uh, attackers are just going to pivot to attacking the AV itself. So we think this is something critical. So one thing that I want to point out here is, as opposed to the other services that we looked at in the registry, one of the things that we see now is this launch protected reg value. This tells us what type of PPL pro or protected process to run as. So number three, PPL process. This is the anti-malware um, PPL process. So now keep in mind, I haven't I haven't taken ownership of anything yet. What? So they don't even protect the registry key from admin. And I, I, I know this is probably an oversight and you know something that I'm sure that, that is easy to fix within the kernel mode drivers. And and that, that that's where this need to actually needs to be built into. Um, because then even as system, you can't change it. You can't mess with it. Um, and and again, traditional AV, I have an I have an issue doing this same stuff to them. So I know that it's possible. I know that they can get better, and I want them to get better because honestly, I think the product as itself is awesome. It really stops a lot of stuff that traditional AV, the signature-based AV, doesn't. But we want them to get better. We need them to get better because I don't know about you guys. I am in the process of working myself out of a job. I want them to be so good that I don't have a job anymore. I can go and do construction, flip burgers, whatever. But you know. That 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 that's that should be the eventual goal of this. To have everything so good that we no longer have jobs. We don't need to be infosec anymore. So again, currently running, protected process light. Sorry, I'm cutting in and out. Let's just make sure that the Falcon service is running. Yep, sure enough. Hey, homie, what's your password? Is that with one or two L's? All right, so as we're rebooting, um, yeah. Anybody have any questions so far? No. Please don't call me. Yes. I, I honestly don't know. I haven't actually had access to ATP in, in um, a little bit of a little bit of time here. Everybody knows your name. You've been doxxed. All right. And All right, so let's take a look. And nope, no more CrowdStrike service. No Falcon service. Thanks, Tony.
All right. So the question is, what if you are on a production server and you can't reboot? Do you think the real bad guys are going to care if you can't reboot a production server? Oh, I, 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 I understand, but I mean, the whole idea here is to act like the real bad guys. That's the only way they're going to get better. If you put if you put constraints on what you can on can and what can and cannot do, and I'm not saying to go and destroy data. I'm not I'm not saying you know cost cost a company millions of dollars a minute for for downtime, but you know hold hold the vendors accountable. I mean yes you yes I'm I'm sure if you're on a test and and you try this and you take down a server you're you're, you're gonna you're you're gonna have some talking uh, too, but in a controlled environment, proving that this can be done, and not only proving that it can be done, but proving that it can be prevented, I, I think is I think is the more valuable takeaway here. Yes. So, you know, any large corporation, uh, just imagine how many machines make beat down at any given time and when they haven't checked in. To be quite honest, that's not unusual. Uh, it doesn't look unusual. Uh, you may, if you have 100,000 endpoints, you might have 10,000 of them not checking in, either because they're off or there's some sort of malfunction in the software. So, to be honest, that reporting is kind of noisy and really is a lot of false positives there. You'll never see that in the noise. Any more questions? Yes. Well, you may want to track 4670 events. Uh, that's going to tell you when any object is taken control of or any ACLs are changed. Uh, that's a good start. Of course, if somebody kills the network as they're doing it, you may not see it before it's all over. Um, but definitely that's a good start. Uh, Sysmon is also pretty good at seeing some of this stuff. Um, it's tracking it. Hopefully uh, it gets out to your sim and you might see some of that as it's happening. Yes. Right, right. Well, there's also um, many escalations and, and ways to get admin even when you're not local admin available. There's zero days and all kinds of stuff. It, they're out there all the time. <laughs>